you that you ever do in NTU. Okay, so you have to work hard in the right way. I teach the engineering physics students. It's the standard lecture tutorial system. I spend a lot of time trying to understand what the students are thinking, to build the bridge of knowledge from their end and connect it to what we want them to learn. So you need to make those things come alive for the students so that they can see the applications of these laws in daily life, even in solving engineering problems. Once the students are engaged, they are motivated to learn, now you can actually challenge them to maximise their potential and to pick up the relevant skills. Because we have limited contact time with the students, we need to be efficient and effective. So we need to find the base and to start from there. So for the students who are very good, the usual trick is actually to give them a very simple problem which you know from experience that they will not be able to solve. That will make them pay attention. And because the problem is simple, it's easy to carry those who have very little foundation. You need to diagnose what is the problem with your approach. And it takes many iterations to refine it and fine tune it. So we are trying to fill in the gaps. And we are also trying to you know, clean up whatever misconception that they may have. That's how you can make a class converge, even though they come from a very diverse background. And very specifically, it's talking about the weight. Usually I'll just teach a concept, do one or two work examples. And actually I learn how students learn uh, in this process. And I know their weaknesses. From there, I have a good sense of how big a conceptual jump the students have to get a correct understanding. It's very, very valuable for me to design the curriculum properly. So I know where I should reinforce. Let me, let me make the uh, make the last yeah. Why don't you do that? When I came and attended a few classes, it was actually beyond expectation. It was interesting, I get it, I understand. It doesn't just want you to memorize, it wants you to understand. And once you understand how the concept works, everything is physics, maybe the Newton's law of free fall, you know that, oh, so this is how it works. So it's no longer just memorizing, there's more interaction, more real life applications. Your velocity is just like they're slowing down. So we try to bring apparatus to the class and make students solve a sort of a real life problem. So so an example is the students have to predict by calculation where the ball will land first. It's how in his class always relates to real life application that he makes it uh, it's something that is very long, like right? sometimes you know the, how, how physics term can be very long, explained in one chunk, but then he can make it so simple into a, like just a, a few phrases and then do it in an experiment. So do you see the volume shrinked? And now it's back again. But it's on the ground and now it's coming up. I'm more of a visual person, so if someone says something, I might not be able to understand. But if I can see in a picture form, or maybe live demo, I can understand what. I can see that his lecture data is more filled than compared to other lectures I attend. I think it's because people really want to come and attend his one and see what he does every time. We have a dynamic feedback system, uh, knowing how the students think as the lesson is progressing. And then we can do an immediate correction. We can. Um, Know, teach a little bit more if we find that large number of students in the class learn something wrongly. You need to do tweaks and changes as the course progress. So it's a very dynamic process. We take the risk in a responsible way and incrementally. Whenever you have a new initiative, you need to feel the ground and you need to find some way to address those behaviours or concerns. We're trying to make the lectures as interactive as possible. So the most important resource is actually time and opportunities to interact with students for the preparation of a good lesson. I also have a team of teaching assistants because it's a big class. So we have weekly meetings. The assistants will actually feed back to me what they encountered in the class, what were the common misconcepts and the difficulties that the students would face. Some students, their background in math is not as strong. In the tutorial, we will conduct some experiments, activities for them to play around with so that they will learn by doing and they will be more motivated to learn the stuff. The range of the learning ability of the students is really big, so you probably need some contents that actually can cater at least for most of the people first, then targeting a bit slightly smaller groups, like one by one. Because yeah, that is actually a very challenging task to design such that it will fit most of the students. Okay, so sometimes when they start solving version one way, you just in the lecture theatre setting, the response where becomes very important. This is when TEL and technology is actually a very important tool. One of the things that I tried was to ask students to sketch the velocity time graph of a given scenario. 
I managed to get like 800 graphs displayed on the screen. And I could pinpoint the common mistakes made by the students so they could learn from each other's mistakes. And I could actually just tell the correct features of the graph should be. So in this way, you could see the responses of everyone in the LT. So this also provides instant feedback for students. In this sense, uh, no, it can be collaboration. You don't see the word up trust. It's called buoyant force. I want to set thinking questions for the students in the midterm. It is an essential experience to learning that you're forced to think uh, under time constraint. I think they recognize that it is essential that they are made to think to be able to solve problems creatively and to handle novel situations. It's a risk that I have to take. But I think it is very important to communicate to the students that you're doing it for their good. At the end of the day, if we give them something that is watered down uh, and doesn't really prepare them for work, we're wasting their time. How many you think iron can float in seawater? Raise your hand. OPTL allows us to plan for the lesson. You always start with the end in mind. To be effective, it's always easier to plan backwards. It's hard to achieve specific targets. If you just let things happen by themselves, it's not very likely that you'll be very effective. It's not just particular teaching. If you want to do research, you will also have to do a research plan. You need to know the options the paths that you can take. So teaching a class is a bit of a research as well because there are uncharted grounds. The important thing is actually to find a balance that will inform the students but yet not constrain the content and the skills that we teach because some of these things would change with time. Dr. Ho Shen Yong from the School of Physical and Mathematical Sciences who receives a University Gold Award and is designated Educator of the Year. A good teaching is not just clear presentations, it's also giving students the opportunity to think for themselves. So sometimes you, you just want to make things a little off and see whether they can sort out the mess by themselves.